What's going on guys? Little blending. A lot of people are actually surprised that I'm even driving again. And I totally understand why. Um, this was a big decision for me after about two and a half years. Well, no, it's been about, it's been about two years of me not driving, maybe only one and a half of completely not driving at all. I stopped um, kind of in the middle of 2020 and now we're almost going into 2023. So yeah, it's almost two years of not driving and I'm just now getting back on the platforms, um, Uber and now recently I just signed up for Lyft. I gripe and moan about Uber and Lyft, but I gotta be honest with you guys, it's not a bad part-time job. And I don't want to get you a wrong impression about how much money you can make, um, especially for you people in Connecticut. There's all different strategies and ways to make pretty decent money driving for Uber and Lyft. If you pick the right times of day, the right hours, you can make a killing out here. I am not out here to teach you that strategy. My strategy is to just use Uber and Lyft as a part-time means to put even more money into my holding company. So I don't even take a paycheck from Uber. Most drivers will cash out each day. I do have the Uber debit card, so I can have the ability to cash out, but I probably won't cash out unless I just want a cash out one day so I can have money for the gas for the week. I probably will start doing that. But other than that, I probably will never cash out. I will let my funds go into my Navy Federal account on a weekly basis and take a portion of that and put it into my holding company. And a portion of that will uh, pay my Navy Federal debit card or credit card, sorry. So I don't really find a need to do this really early mornings and late at nights and deal with the drunk people and the craziness and the drama and getting up early is just not my thing at my age i'm trying to chill so i get up at my leisure which is usually for me about eight o'clock at the latest um i try not to sleep all day i try to get up work on my content on the channels um nice guy driver being one of them and then i get back on the road for about four hours a day guys i'm not out here to impress anybody i told you guys i was going to do this part-time only to bring in extra money but it is probably the best part-time job but i just don't recommend it full-time at all um in the past i would have said yes Back in about 2018, when I started that this, I would say it was definitely much more of a prospect to be great for full time. Um, but I don't see it now. They're just doing too many pay cuts and they're getting creative on the pay cuts. So it's not like you blatantly see a pay cut. Like it's, you have to really look at your analytics. You have to really do a deep dive to figure out that you're not even really making the same money as you used to. Um, the best way of judging it, if you do a lot of airport rides, what you used to get, um, if you get a lot of rides to New York, you compare that to what you used to get and you'll see it's just not the same. Um, and this is my theory. My theory is the gig economy apps will siphon more from you the more you make so for example if you're a person that just comes out here like me and you barely make a hundred 120 bucks a day they're not looking at you they're looking like for you big earners you guys that are literally making you know three to four hundred dollars a day if you make three to four hundred dollars a day you're doing a lot of long trips you are a target because I guarantee you, if you cash out, if you let them automatically deposit that into your account and you cash out after the fact, you're losing money. 
I feel like they're nickel and diamond you to death to the point where you don't even notice it's gone. I heard a story from, um, I think it was a rideshare year professor, and he was saying how one guy, he knew for a fact a customer paid him a $20 tip, and he went to look later, and he had a $5 tip. And he wanted to dispute it, and they deleted the information to so he couldn't even have any evidence that the transaction even happened. So they basically like deny that he even got the twenty dollar tip and gave him and made it constructed as if the customer gave him a five dollar tip. And this was a high earner. Key word, he was a high earner. I think the high earners are the targets. People like me, they might nickel and dime me a few cents, you know, maybe a dollar here and there, and I wouldn't notice it anyway. But that would piss me off if I, I know for a fact a customer gave me a $20 tip and Uber only showed me a $5 tip. That would piss me off and probably make me want to leave the app. It honestly would. But I don't make a habit of like drilling and looking for evidence. Cause I know they're scamming, but again, this is, you got to take it for what it is. It's, it's a good means of bringing in part-time income to help you stay afloat. Like between MWR financial, my software business, now I'm renting the room. Uh, and I'm also bringing in extra money, um, from Uber and Lyft now. So I have enough income now to do what I need to do for my business and expand. And one of the things I'm, I'm possibly, I'm still dabbling with the rental car thing. I'm trying to figure out a way that I can get around the insurance thing. That's the biggest part of getting involved with renting cars is probably insurance. And uh, I'm still dabbling with that. I don't want to deal with Toro and hire a car. So I got to figure out ways around that. Um, because I don't feel like I need a middleman to make it happen where it's effective. I feel like I can rent my own vehicles directly to a consumer, collect all the profits, and maybe every once in a while, as I grow, I'm going to get probably one out of five people that's going to play games with me and not return the car or try to steal the car altogether or try to sell the car. I believe one out of five people will try you. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be prepared for that, but I got to have the right commercial insurance situation. And I'm still trying to navigate that. If you guys got any um, any information on any good commercial insurance that may be able to work, that's affordable, you know, hit me in the links below, in the comments below. But um, that's what I'm working on right now. And um, I'm also looking at how I can do my own Airbnb situation without Airbnb. Like literally go to a landlord under my newly constructed LLC they'd be like look I want to uh, sublease this property to uh, business professionals will I be allowed to do that if I make sure I maintain a really clean environment um, I'll probably get rental insurance anything that will make them feel comfortable about the situation and I'll go to a landlord that's in a desperate situation um, and then we'll try to play it by ear that way. I'm, I'm looking into doing that possibly. Um, a lot of things that I'm trying to cut out the middleman and a lot of the opportunities I'm doing. Um, my landlord has a real estate license. I may go around using her, try to construct a deal where I do a lease or the option to buy. This way I can get into the property that I want to acquire, get my credit where it needs to be, and then purchase the property at a later date. 
I'm thinking about doing that. I probably will bring the guy that's renting the room with me. He's already agreed to it. If I get something in, this, in the same general area, he'll be on board to continue renting from me. So I will have that additional income. So I'm doing a lot this year. Um, going into 2023, and I believe 2023 is going to be the year my online stuff really pops as well. Because I'm getting a lot of signups for uh, my software business simply by telling people go to the link below. And if I get that same success with MWR Financial, now that I'm promoting this bill shredder that they have, guys, the sky's a limit how much income I could possibly bring in. Of course... Like I always tell you guys, the goal, the, the minimum goal should be five grand a month because that's when, if you have five grand a month going through your accounts, that's going to qualify you to get more funding for your business when you need it. But if you're bringing in over that, say 10 grand a month, you are doing better than the average American. And as long as you maintain that and slowly grow, you're gonna be successful. That's my goal. Um, yeah, going into 2023. I'm gonna try to pull it off, guys. Um, but I want your continued support. Thank you guys for the, the few views that I have gotten and the few loyal subscribers that continue year after year to watch my content. Um, even you people that randomly come by and you watch my content content, and you catch a video, you know, try to support. Give me a like, you know, subscribe to the channel, help a brother out, hit that bell icon, and I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.